But we'll begin with Miss Latasha Brown, uh, who's an award-winning consultant, a political strategist, and the co-founder of Black Voters Matter. She'll be followed by her co-founder, Cliff Albright, who's also with the uh, Black Voters Matter, then followed by John Lesnar uh, with the American Fifth Act, and then finally, uh, the incomparable journalist Greg Pallast, who is the principal investigator in this affair. Ms. Latasha Brown, please kick us off. So thank you all. Welcome um, to, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Um, we're coming here today because we know that democracy is in a critical state right now. Um, we are absolutely, um, um, totally disappointed in the Secretary of State in Georgia for the two, more than two, the 200,000 voters who have been unrighteously removed from the voting rolls and so and without merit. And what we know that in an election year, in any election year, that any time that there is a threat and people have a barrier to voting, that that is a form of voter suppression. And so we see this and accept this as voter suppression. In a critical election year, we're calling for the Secretary of State to actually to put those folks back on the rolls immediately. That those 200,000 people who were denied their right to vote in the election uh, can be denied their right to vote in the election that we think it is imperative that um, that they are added back to the rolls immediately. Um, in addition to that, we think that it's really important that as we're doing this, as we're doing this work, that going forward, we want to see much more um, care in making sure that people are not illegally losing their rights, that we are, as other organizations and voter right organizations, we're paying attention to this, that we're going to hold people accountable, that part of what we see in the state of Georgia, um, and what we would see all across this country around why voter suppression continues to run rampant is because it is, there's no accountability. And so there has to be some accountability of what, when this happens. Um, there has to be correction. There has to be accountability, and then there has to be a strengthening um, of the process so that people are not denied their right to vote. We are the fifth, this is the 55th year of the anniversary of the Voting Rights Act um, from the voting rights movement that passed in uh, Selma, that people in March in Selma, which I am a native of. And here we are right now in the year 2020, where people are illegally dropped from the voting rolls, right? And so as when that error is found, then they should be replaced immediately. And so that we've got to really know that that is time for us to strengthen this process. We are holding them accountable. I will turn over to my um, co-partner um, and founder, Cliff Albright. Yeah, thank you, Latasha. I think that, you know, you know, as Latasha said, one of the messages that we want to come out of this, out of this press conference, out of these actions that we're seeking against the Secretary of State is for folks to be clear that we have power. We got power. And so we got power to hold the Secretary of State accountable. Um, there's got to be consequences when, when bad doers, the folks who mean harm, um, and folks who, who have a public responsibility when they fail to see that, and when it's not even just an accidental failure, um, we've seen that there's been a, a record, that there's been a track record of this type of suppression. And so we got power to hold folks accountable, but we also got power in terms of like what we can do, because what we know is that there's going to be a delay in getting justice. And what we want to make sure is that justice delayed is not justice denied. And so we're going to be working with our partners, with other organizations, with Greg Palace and his team to make sure that regardless of what the Secretary of State does, that we're going to be taking efforts to reach out to, the, to these voters to see who's already been added back onto the rolls because of our primaries and who still needs to be added back onto the rolls. Um, what we don't want to have happen is that these actions of voter suppression, that these purges that take place illegally, that what we don't want to have happen that not only do they remove people from the rolls because of the actual purge, but that it actually reinforces the sense that many people in our community have that our votes don't matter that the system is rigged. And so we're gonna be doing everything we can to reassure folks that we got power and that they matter, that their votes matter and that their lives matter. And so those are some of the actions that we'll, we'll be taking in this specific regard, but it'll also be combined with the other aspects of our We Got Power campaign, which is the outreach that we're doing, which is the caravans that we're doing, which is the, the big blackest bus in America that will be traveling around to these communities, again, to let people know that they matter and that when folks try to suppress their votes, that it will not go unnoticed and that there will not be a lack of accountability and consequences. My name is Greg Pallast. Um, I, uh, the ACLU of Georgia on September 2nd released our report of the Palest Investigative Fund. We are a not-for-profit 501c3 nonpartisan organization. 
In October 2019, the Secretary of State, Mr. Raffensperger, uh, removed 300,000 voters from the voter rolls of Georgia on the grounds that these are voters who've moved from their residence. And if you don't live in Atlanta, you don't live in Georgia, you can't legally vote in Georgia or Atlanta. No problem with that. However, we hired, we hired John Lenzer of American Fifth Act, who is what is called an, an, address, an, an advanced address hygiene expert. He works with uh, Google and Amazon, and we also have Mark Swedland on the line who works with him. We hired in all together four experts in address verification, including the licensee of the United States Postal Service, Merkel Incorporated. Take a look at our 22 page report, which has on its cover, Christine Jordan, who two years ago at 92 was thrown out of a voting station. We filmed her as she was thrown out of a voting station because they said she had moved. I then went to her house that she supposedly moved from and there was a picture of Martin Luther King on the wall. Martin Luther King, I said, you knew King? Yes, she said, he's my cousin. He came to our house for ch after church every Sunday for dinner. She hadn't moved, but she lost her vote. We dug through the list with these experts and issued and did an analysis of the purge list run by Mr. Raffensperger and the state. And what we found in the, of the 313,000 people who supposedly moved, that um, 198,571 people had not moved because we didn't do a scientific sample. Uh, John Lenzer, Mark Swedland, uh, Computech Corporation, the United States Postal Services, uh, Chief Licensee Merkel Inc. together went name by name using 240 data feeds, nearly 2,000 data points on every citizen to find out if these people have moved. And according to the Postal Service, according to these experts, they didn't move. Almost 200,000 people wrongly removed. And when you look at who was removed, overwhelmingly young people and voters of color. This has a Jim Crow smell to it. We have all the names. Now, this is important. We have offered the ACLU, the Palace Investigative Fund, our experts have offered to sit down with the Secretary of State and his experts to find out where they got it so wrong. We will give him every single name, every single name, and I, it will just be the experts, no lawyers, whatever. But I should say, the law requires the Secretary of State to do what we did. The law requires, the federal law requires you cannot remove people based on supposedly, according to Secretary of State's office, they use the National Change of Address Registry from the post office. But according to the post office uh, experts, who, and you have to use a licensee, and I want to emphasize this, the Federal law requires that you use a licensee of the post office. We did. Apparently, the Secretary of State didn't and got it dead wrong. But apparently, they don't mind 200,000 Georgia citizens losing their vote, votes of people that they don't want to vote. That's pretty clear. So now, our attorney for the Palace Investigative Fund has, has sent a letter, is sending a letter today to Mr. Raffensperger We'll make that public now. And you can ask our lawyer, Jeannie Meyer. You can speak to John Lenzer, who's been, who again, or Mark Swedland, who are on the line, to explain the work that they've done. But we are sending a letter, a formal, what's called an NVRA request. We are saying that under the National Voter Registration Act, you must retain a U.S. Postal Service licensee. We want to know the name of this secret, mysterious licensee that you used. And if he didn't use one, the entire purge is completely illegal. If he did use one, why the secret? You can't keep these things secret. I would remind Mr. Raffensperger, and I hope that some journalists listening here will speak today to him and ask him this question. Why won't you sit down with the ACLU experts, with the Palace Investigative Fund experts, go over the list, go over the list of people who have been removed and return them to the list. 
Black Voters Matter is demanding that you return these voters to the list. And I would remind you, we'd sued Mr. We'd sued Brian Kemp and then Mr. Raffensperger for withholding information on a prior purge when they removed Martin Luther King's 92-year-old cousin. And they lost in court. The judge demanded that they open their files. They had to, by the way, send us a check. Mr. Raffensperger, do, you want, do we really have to go back to the judge and say you are concealing core information about how you wrongly removed 200,000 people? In the meantime, with uh, working with the Palace Investigative Fund and our mailing experts, we have the list. We're going to be doing a mass mailing of, of postcards to as many purge people as we can. We'll do our best to contact people, but we're asking people, please check your registration. And if you want to find out if you're one of the purged, one of the people who won't be able to vote in November, who wonder why you didn't get your mail-in ballot, please go to SaveMyVote2020.org. That's SaveMyVote2020.org. If you want more information, if you want the report, our 22-page report, which is based on the work of these experts, this is the Secretary of State has attacked me personally saying I'm a Stacey Abrams shill. <laughs> There's worse things, uh, but it's not about Greg Palast. It's not about the ACLU, which the Secretary of State has been threatening. I can't even give you the details, but let me tell you, there's threats coming from his office for the ACLU, against the ACLU, which simply did nothing more than release my report. And I did nothing more than present you the evidence from the Postal Service's licensee from these three address hygiene list experts. Now understand, it means cleaning the list so that they're honest. So, so we have the information that you said people moved and they didn't. We've spoken to them, we've filmed them, they haven't moved. You must return them to the voter rolls. And if not, you will, um, we're sending you a letter. Do we have to see you in court again? But I want some journals to ask the Secretary of State today why not sit down with the Palace Fund experts and our list and find out how you got your list so wrong? I hope that some journalists will ask the Secretary of State today as we are, give us the name of your postal service licensee, which the law requires you to have. Apparently they got the list from, I don't know, Joe's postal change of address list, but you must use the postal service licensee. Who is your mystery man, Mr. Raffensperger? Put these people back on, sit down, sit down with us and our experts and find out why you got your system so wrong. Or maybe from your view, given the color and age of the voters removed, maybe you think you got it right. We don't, sit down with us. This is not, we don't wanna litigate. We want to save people's votes. So also please get out the word, save my vote 2020. Dot org. And if you have any questions for our experts, they are here. If you have any questions for our lawyer, Jeannie Meyer, she's here. Obviously, Latasha Brown, Cliff Albright, Black Voters Matter. They're, they're the people uh, deal, working with the voters on the ground, and they will be taking this up. It's not about the ACLU. It's not about Greg Palast. It is about taking off 198,000 and more voters for moving who never moved anywhere. Thank you. So John Lenzer, who has, rep, who has advised 350 corporations, Amazon, Google, eBay, you name it. With also, we have with us also Mark Sweetland, who is, uh, who is also here with him, but just John will speak and explain how he determined that people that the Secretary of State said had moved had not in fact moved. Again, it's not a scientific sampling, it's a name by name review. John, could you explain what you did? Uh, yes, um, uh, Craig uh, retained us to do a mailing and we've been retained by hundreds of different companies to do mailings and obviously when people spend money on postage and printing, they want uh, the particular mail piece to arrive in the right mailbox. They wanna make sure the person hasn't moved that they're uh, getting their mail there. Now, as a byproduct of processing uh, mail to be certain that it's going to be delivered, you get uh, very extensive reports 
both from the post office and the vendor that you use for address hygiene. And in our case, uh, we process these lists uh, through NCLA and also advanced hygiene at a particular vendor that's uh, named Merkel. And the post office requires before you do a mass mailing that you process these lists through uh, the national change of address file, which goes back 48 months as everybody that's moved, that registered they'd moved. But we don't uh, just process lists through NCOA because NCOA may not be as complete. It depends on people self-reporting that they've moved. So uh, one of the advanced hygiene routines that Merkel uh, utilizes is to bring in data feeds from uh, over 200 different sources. These are uh, records of people's billing for their credit cards, for uh, their utilities, for this, that, and other things. And the assumption is that if a person is paying their bills, uh, you know, 10 or 15 different bills at a particular address, they indeed uh, still live there. So they maintain a massive database that constantly has 200 different vendors reporting to it of where people live. And we use that address file to ensure that the mail we mail uh, is going to people that live there. Now we took the 313,000 names uh, that were on this particular file uh, that, that were deleted from voter rolls and we couldn't find 33,000 of them. Uh, they just did not exist in the, in the database. We found another 8,000 that had actually died, um, 10,000 that had uh, incomplete addresses but we found 260,000 or two, yeah, 260,000 that were verified. They weren't deceased, they weren't dropped because of addresses. And of those 178,682 indeed lived at the address uh, that they were registered at. And so if we had been working for a commercial mail, mailer, we would have mailed those people and been very, very happy. Um, and we would have with 99% certainty felt that we were getting that mail piece to that person living at that address. Another uh, 49,609 we determined had moved out of state. 8,372 had moved within the same county uh, within Georgia and another 7,427 had moved outside of the county but within the state of Georgia. Now, one of the, the mysteries of this 313,000 is that on the records, they were designated as to the reason that uh, they were eliminated. One was designated in COA, another one, no contact, and another one returned mail. Um, interestingly, even the one that was designated in COA, we determined that 60,174 were still living at the address of registration. Um, and uh, that was a, a kind of a head scratcher. We had expected that if they had run it through NCOA, we would have found most of those people having moved. So that, uh, that actually frightened me a little bit and I kind of wondered if, if we had done our job properly. So I took it to a second licensee of, of the post office and simply ran the 60,000 through NCOA. Again, that goes back uh, 48 months and like three or four came back as having moved. Um, basically, they confirmed that, that virtually all of the 60,000 were still there. They could not find them in the NCOA file. So uh, we, you know, we, we don't know what the answer here is. Uh, we've taken the file. We've done what we would have done for a commercial mailer. It says these people still live where they live. We've run it through both regular NCOA uh, twice in the case of one of the files, and uh, we've run it through what we refer to as advanced uh, address hygiene, which goes beyond NCOA, and it's still coming back. Now we're going to take this list, we're going to take a sample of it, and as, as the intent of these files, the, this processing is to do a mailing, and we're going to do a mailing. And we will uh, ask the post office to return any postcards that we mail that are undeliverable and validate uh, further uh, the work that we've done. But uh, that's where we stand at this point. This is Dazon Dixon Jallo, WRFG Atlanta, uh, also Sister Love in Atlanta and in Johannesburg. 
my I have two questions. My first one is just the basic one about the timeline. What's the expectation of what happened with your movements and your plans, given that the deadline for registration is fast upon us in terms of early registration, I mean, early voter um, days starting very soon. So the timeline is the first question. And the second is, what's the actual expectation from the office at this point, given where we are in the national or in the general conversation as well as in the state? Okay, again, today the Palace Investigative Fund is sending a letter to the Secretary of State under the National Voter Registration Act saying you must give us the name of your secret postal service licensee that's a person that's required by law. We hired the top postal service licensee, Merkel. There's only a, a d couple dozen of these companies in America. You must use one. You can't use Joe's uh, change of address list. It has to be the postal service licensee. They have to give us the name. They have to give us the methods and we are off and they cannot ignore our information under the National Voter Registration Act. They've all, Mr. Raffensperger, the secretary of state has already lost to us in court earlier this year because you want another round. But it's not about litigation. It's about putting these people back. So we have to, given that we have an October 5 deadline date, the Palace Fund will be working with Black Voters Matter Fund, Latasha Brown and Cliff Albright, and others who want to join in to get out the word. We're going to do a mailing. We also are going to have some uh, emails. We're going to have uh, some calls. But, uh, and we, most important, through our social networks and others, we are pushing people to Save My Vote 2020, which has the Georgia Purge list. Please go there. If you are missing, tell us your story. If you're missing, click on the button to re-register. I can't tell you, whatever you can do at RFG or other outlets, please let people know. Check their registration. V almost none of the 200,000 people who are have been removed from the voter rolls, know that they've been removed. I w in, in 18, when I was at the polls, one voter after another was removed and they didn't know it and they walked in. So please, so now Latasha, what's our next move before October 5, the uh, registration cutoff date? So I will say Daezung, it's great to see you. Um, but also I think Cliff raised it and, and what's really important for us right now, part of the call to action is they should be immediately put back on the rolls, right? As they sort this out, the immediate request is not to put additional work on people or put a burden on folks that is of, of a fault, unlike the, it's not their fault that they're off. So their rights should not be impeded at all. So we are asking for an immediate restoration of them on the voting rolls. In addition to that, that we will also, as Greg raised and as Cliff talked about earlier, we will make contact there's an effort for us to make contact, but that is not the burden of us as citizens. That is the burden of the state. The Secretary of State's office has one job. That's their job. Their job is to maintain the list. Their job is to make sure that we're running a free and fair election to not impede people's right to vote. So until they can actually prove, you know, it's the opposite. Until they should, can actually prove that these people should be removed from the rolls, they should be restored immediately. Yeah, um, you no, know, because this, this question of timeline is so important, right? And, and Thank you, and, and I'm, I'm glad to see, you know, somebody from my WRFG family is here. Um, you know, but this question of timeline is so critical because it's part of what is routinely done. You have wrongdoers that do wrong. They know that the clock will run out. And then after the clock is run out, then the attitude will be like, oh, well, it's too late. The election is taking place. You know, we can't overturn an election. We have got to establish that there's got to be consequences when they try to try to use this strategy. Part of why this strategy has become even more effective over the past six, seven years is because of the gutting of the Voting Rights Act. The, the Voting Rights Act was created and to a large extent to, to prevent the type of situation where you're always having to go back after a wrong is done. That's the essence of preclearance, right? And so what we've seen is an increase, not just on this issue, but a range of, of other issues where what they're figuring out is that they'll do the wrong, they'll force us and, and, and folks like Greg and his team and the ACLU and, and the other legal partners that we have that then have to do all kinds of litigation after the fact, which then runs out the clock and the wrong is done and then there's no consequences. So all of these issues are connected to the, the Voting Rights Act, 
to, to this concept of having consequences, even the same concept of qualified immunity that we've been discussing over the past couple of months in regards to police officers, we need to readdress and, and revisit that issue in regards to these secretaries of states and these states and the way that they have qualified immunity when they do um, acts of wrong or negligence or whatever you want to call it in regards to you know our most sacred right, which is this right to vote. And so, um, so again, we really just want to raise up that we're going to be doing what we can before the clock runs out to reach our folks, right? Especially, like Greg said, the mail, the email, especially the email, because there might be some of these, some of these that we can get re-registered simply by having some email cons um, um, contacts and by getting re-registered online. So we'll be doing some of that. But as Latasha said, that shouldn't be our burden in what's supposed to be, you know, the greatest democracy on the on the on the face of the country. We know that hasn't been true. But that's the that's the narrative that we've been given. In this case, in all of what we've seen in Georgia over the past past um, eight years, nine years, really uh, belies that narrative. Uh, yeah, very informative information. Thank you so much for uh, providing all those statistics. Is there any way that uh, we can help? Uh, you've given us the site um, SaveMyVote2020.org. What else can we do to help? You're sending out mailers, phone calls, that kind of thing. Anything we can do? Let me turn that back to Latasha, who's working on the ground. I will say that the Palace Investigative Fund with, uh, with Black Voters Matter will be sending out mailings. So we need help with the mailings. Uh, some groups are actually doing handwritten cards, contacting people. So please help us. We really uh, we want to expand our, our mailing force, uh, contacting people with, with handwritten cards. They do respond to that. These little postcards sent out sometimes by the Secretary of State, which look like, you know, legal documents you throw it away, it looks like junk mail. So we need a contact to people. So we need volunteers to be doing the postcards and, and to be contacting people. That's very, very important. And of course, you, please use your social networks to send people to savemyvote2020.org. If they don't know what to do, it's simple, or go to gregpalace.com. And um, Black Voters Matter is really the, the, the people on the ground. Remember, it's not the ACLU or Greg Powell's, which, is, which, did, which found out that 200,000 people were wrongly removed. We have the experts and we want, again, as Latasha said, to return them. So that also means uh, sending notes to the Secretary of State, put these people back on. And by the way, reveal who your secret, uh, you know, if, if you're gonna be the purge in general, who are the, uh, the uh, soldiers that you hired to do this? The law requires you to reveal your nasty little methods. So I'll turn this over to Latasha because she's the one on the front lines with Cliff Albright. Um, I'll just say this quickly. I think that um, for even the media has a role to play. That fundamentally what winds up happening that inf this information and not having the information, that's part of the strategy to keep people locked out of the process. And so I do think, because we do know that there are people, people should, at the very least, we should lift up this story so that people are at least on alert um, so that they can check their status. We have a website on our, you can go to Greg's website and also ours in, um, in Georgia. We have blackvotersmatterfund.org forward slash vote that people can check their status, they can even register right on the spot and they can connect with us with the work that we're doing. And so it's really important that there's a message out here, particularly in folks understanding how egregious this is. When you're talking about 200,000 people, that's a medium sized city, any place in America. In some states that's actually a large city. And so that's a lot of people. And so what I think that is really important that in what people can do one, is we've got to get the word out that this in fact has happened. Um, we've got to have people on alert so that they can check their status because we want folks to check their status. And then as 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 uh, Greg said earlier, we're also gonna do some follow-up. So, um, and that's part of the reason of some of the work that we're doing with uh, where we're working in the state of Georgia. And Cliff, maybe you wanna share some of the things that we're doing just in Georgia to really heighten awareness around uh, this election cycle. Yeah, no, I mean, there's not too much I can I can really add. You know, we've talked about, you know, our bus tours, our caravans. We've talked about the phone banking, the texting. We're, we're text sending, you know, millions of text messages in, in the state of Georgia. Um, you know, radio ads. I mean, we're using every, you you name the form of outreach and we're, we're using it. And so, again, as Latasha said, uh, as Greg said, go to SaveMyVote2020.org. As Latasha said, you can um, go to uh, BlackVotersMatterFund.org slash vote share that information. If you know somebody who needs to register, who needs to, to check their uh, registration status, 
um, go on and share those 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 links out. But you know, I want to again reemphasize, you know, this this close to two hundred thousand number. You know, Latasha said, you know, that's the that's the size of some cities, right? Um, it also happens to be three times what the gap was in the last gubernatorial election, right? And so, you know, that's the this this is not an inconsequential number. This is literally a number that can decide this election in 2020. Dazon wants to know, what are your expectations for a response from the Secretary of State's office? Ms. Brown? <laughs> I mean, you know, we're going, it's up, we're going to the Fox to ask him to, um, who was in charge of the coup. But the, the bottom line is he works for the people. So at the end of the day, you know, his response so far, I mean, part of why we are where, where we are is because his office has not done a good job um, at, 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 at handling the business of the state. We are hoping that there is enough goodwill that he um, acknowledges the error of his ways and his office, and they correct it, that we would hope that he would want to correct this. And so we will put pressure on the office to do this. But I do think that we have to really recognize that voter suppression is an intentional strategy. And we have to call people out. We don't need to, you know, 200,000 people, that's a lot for any data person. And I know Mr. Lindsay would say that that's a, that's a pretty big a uh, pretty big number. You know, even what, what John Lindsay was saying is when they came up with the 60,000, he was like, hold on, something is wrong, right? But 200,000 to be the Secretary of State, um, to have that number, that is, that, that it feels like there's an intention behind that. And so what we are, we also know, and let's be, let's talk about, we just don't have the presidential election. We have two Senate seats that are up in the state of Georgia that are critical, right? And we've seen how these, uh, these elections have been politicized in a way that quite frankly, the Republicans have had a strategy to steal elections, right? To steal elections all across, they don't have, I think part of the problem is they know that the numbers of, they don't have the numbers anymore because I think that the majority of Americans believe in democracy. I think that the majority of Americans want a fair process and because they don't have the numbers on their side and they certainly don't have an agenda that is inclusive or speaks to the majority of Americans, the only tactical strategy they have is to steal. And so those of us that are part of this democracy, in order to make it be real, we've got to hold them accountable. We've got to hold the party accountable. We've got to hold party leadership accountable. And we've got to specifically hold the Secretary of State accountable, who we have entrusted Right, and making sure that there's free and fair elections in Atlanta, I mean, in, in Georgia. So for there to be 200,000 people, we should be shocked. There should be a shock um, around that being able to take place. And as Cliff said, um, Brother Cliff said that that's three times the gap between um, between the gu gubernatorial election. And so we know that that 200,000 is a critical number. And so and the first thing that he can show of goodwill is he can restore that list immediately. Can I? Uh, can I? Uh, Rathersburger will be speaking to the Atlanta Press Club today, so he should be asked this question. Uh, can I also say this on the on the question of ex what we expect out of him? You know, as Latasha said, we expect him to do his job. We expect him to follow the law, right? But as has been said many times, and it's particularly in recent years, it's, it's almost become trite to to say, you know, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them the first time, right? He's shown us who he is. Because keep in mind, this is the same Secretary of State who wanted to be patted on the back because they sent out absentee ballot applications, right, uh, back in the spring in the, in, the, in the first wave of the coronavirus. Um, and what you saw was record numbers of folks who used that process. And so what does he then come back and do in the November election? Does he do the same process? No, because that would be too much like right. And so they changed the process where they no longer decided to send out automatically those absentee ballot applications. He has shown us who he is. This is the same Secretary of State who recently um, has, has gone about purging voters uh, who didn't return, not, not 2019, but a 2020 purge uh, of voters who didn't respond to those, those absentee ballot applications, right? And he did so within the 90-day window during which you're not supposed to be doing any, any cleanup of the, of the voter file. He has shown us who he is. This is the same Secretary of State who then boldly said that he was going to be pursuing to the fullest extent of the law trying to prosecute people who it appears may have voted twice in the recent election cycle, knowing that there was a lot of confusion and mismanagement by his own office. He has shown us who he is. So we expect him to follow the law. But if we pay attention to what he has shown us, 
I have to say that my um um my 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 expectations have been a little bit lower just off of what we've seen already. I just want to mention we have with us again our lawyer Jeannie Meyer for the Palace Investigative Fund, uh, the the official legal notice and letter and offer to the Secretary of State to sit down with our experts to go through the list, put the to, to sh and find out where he went wrong. Where did he get this crazy list again? please ask the Secretary of State, who is your Postal Service licensee that gave you the wrong list? If it's a mistake, let's correct it. If it's intentional, we definitely must correct it. 200,000 people that the post office and the top experts in the nation say have not moved, you've removed. So we, have, we will have the letter to the Secretary of State on our website at that's gregpalace.com. We'll be mounting that shortly, or you can go to uh, gregpalace.com contact and we'll send you the copy of the letter being sent to the, uh, to the secretary of state. And obviously uh, you know how to contact the communications director of the ACLU. Uh, but again, it's not the ACLU released the report. Palace Fund simply took the information from the experts. The experts are here. You see them, you can, you look at them. There's two of them. We have four. We're ready to sit down with the Secretary of State, give him our entire list, go through the names, take a look, see why we have the information and find out how he got it wrong. In the meantime, two things. Number one, um, he should return the, all these voters to the list. His process is wrong. And this is stealing democracy from Georgians. Number two, um, I, I wanna thank Black Voters Matter there's some other groups who may be joining in. We'll work with, with them to make sure, number one, that we get a mailing out to as many people as we can. And then the email, whatever contacts, socials, ads, a PR, starting with the mailing from there, whatever we can do to notify people, please check your registration. There's many places to do it. Black Voters Matter Fund.org slash vote. Please save your vote, but ask the Secretary of State, why won't you do the right thing? Let us know who your licensee is and sit down with us. Um, Mayor, I just want to say briefly that, because I, I, I want us to acknowledge that today is actually National Voter Registration Day. So I think that it is I ironic that here we are on a day that's been designated to National Voter Registration Day, and here once again, Black people uh, Black Voters Matter and organizations, social justice organizations, and just those of us that want democracy are here again talking about the denial of voters from being able to exercise their right in this country that's supposed to be a fundamental right that is guaranteed in the Constitution. And so just the irony of that, I think that should, if nothing else, this should be the moment that we're really being reflective and he should be ashamed of himself. Shame, shame, shame. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm a, I've been a journalist in Atlanta for 40 years. This is a darn good story. Uh, take care.